Here's where we want to put a curve in our garden path. A quick turn to avoid the wall. Now we could sketch it out freehand and say it goes something like this and something like that, but that's not at all the kind of curve we have in mind. We want a nice circular curve, a perfect arc. That part of a circle which is referred to as a chord. Well, the chord's just the line, but I mean the whole part of the circle. And in order to achieve that perfect arc, we have to do two things. First, we need to define the parameters of our curve. And secondly, from those parameters, we need to find the radius. The parameters we will decide for ourselves. For the radius, we will use mathematics. So, as with all projects, there must be a beginning, a starting point. And that starting point will be right here. This rock will mark the beginning of our curve, the first point in defining its parameters. Next, we will look for the second point in our curve, somewhere over there, and we'll mark that with another rock. Where do we get that other rock, you might ask? Well, right here in our handy tool bucket. You may note that within this bucket I have collected all the things we need in order to make our curve in the dirt. Two more rocks for a total of three. A hammer. A stout measuring tape that will lock. Plus two stakes and some string. Those will come later. For now, we need another rock and a measuring tape. So after our starting point, we need to decide where our curve will end. Okay, a minimum hallway is three feet. In a house, it's usually no more than four feet. But this is an outside path. So maybe a little more than three, a little less than four. Let's go for three foot six, 42 inches. 42 inches going in and 42 inches coming out. Two times 42 inches is 84 inches. That's seven feet. So we want to make our second rock seven feet from the first. So we're going to stretch out our tape to seven feet, starting from our first rock, and lock it down. Now, we might want our cord to be parallel to the wall we're trying to avoid, but we should be able to do that by eye well enough. So that's where we put our rock, 84 inches, 7 feet. Now that looks pretty good, but if we want to make absolutely sure that our second rock is parallel to the wall, then we simply need to measure the first rock, its distance from the wall. And that is 7 feet 3 inches. So we come over here and measure this distance. That's 7 foot 5, so we move it a little closer. So. Now we double check to make sure if we are seven feet going the other way. And we are exactly that. If you have trouble getting your two points to line up parallel, you can always employ the services of two measuring tapes, like so. So that's the length of our curve, the first of its parameters. What we need now is the depth or height. That's the distance from the bottom of the cord to the apex. What we don't want is for that apex to be so high that it forms a semicircle. Not only would a semicircle create too steep of a curve in our path, there wouldn't be any mystery as regards the radius. A semicircle is a half of a circle. The length of its cord is the same as the diameter of that circle. Half that length is the radius and the radius point from which we strike our circle is halfway along the diameter, smack 
in the middle. If we did want a semicircular curve, we could simply strike our 3 foot 6 radius from the middle of the bottom of our cord, up, around, and down, just like that. But we don't want a semicircular cord. We want something with a height that's less than the circular radius. So, we know our height is less than half of our length. But how do we decide what that height should be? With no other rule to guide us, why don't I walk through the turn in the path and see what makes for a comfortable curve? And while I do so, I will shuffle my feet so as to make a visible record of my movements in the dirt. Most dancing I've done in years. Looks to me like a nice gentle curve. Now we want to measure the height of our curve. And in order to do that accurately, we need to draw a straight line between our two rocks, which we can do very easily with our measuring tape. So now we have a straight line running from one rock to the other, and we want to measure from that line to the peak of our curve. We don't need to draw out the entire line since we're only going to make one measurement in the center. And in order to do that, we will use one of these stakes. Now, let's make it one foot on either side of center. Center is three foot six, half of seven feet. So we go from two foot six, 30 inches, all the way to four foot six, that's 54. Just like that. So now, let's see how far our footsteps are from the line. Yep. That looks to be about 30 inches, two foot six. It's a nice clean figure to work from. And with our third rock, we mark the peak of our arc the farthest extent of the curve in our path. And this dimension, the height, constitutes our arc's last parameter. So now we have established both parameters, all the information we need to determine the radius of the gentle curve in our path. We have the length of our cord or curve starting from rock number one and continuing on to rock number three. And we have the height, the distance from the bottom of the cord to its apex, rock number two. Granted, given these three rocks, it would be much easier now to sketch this curve out freehand. But as I said in the very beginning, that is not the kind of gardeners we are. We are scientific gardeners. And we will do the math and figure out exactly how long this radius should be. And for this, we need to find a formula. Research reveals this formula for finding the radius of a cord when only the length and height are known. The R on the left is the radius. That's the unknown. The L on the right in the parentheses is the length of our arc, and the H that appears both above and below the division line is the height. Okay, so we know what the length is. That's seven feet, 84 inches. And we know what the height is. That's two foot six, 30 inches. So all we need to do now is plug those elements into our formula, and we'll get a problem that looks like this. 84 divided by two squared plus 30 squared gets divided by two times 30, which when keyed into a scientific calculator would look like this. But we can just as easily do these calculations step by step using either a regular calculator or we can even do them longhand. Back to our filled in formula, we start with our only parentheses. 84 divided by two is 42. Next, our first exponent, we square 42. That yields 1,764. The second exponent squares 30, giving 900. Multiplication follows, giving a divisor of 60. Division is next. When we divide each number separately, we wind up with a simple two-number addition, which, when added together, gives us our final answer, 44 and 4 tenths inches. 
For ease of operation, let's call that 44 and a half inches, shall we? That's how long the string should be between our two stakes. Aha! At last, we're going to use our stakes and string. We want to tie these stakes to this string with 44 and a half inches between them. But first, we want to tie one stake to the end of this string, and we're going to use a clove hitch. A clove hitch isn't such a daunting knot. Just two half hitches, thrown one on top of the other, tighten it up, then you make one more half hitch around the standing line to secure it. Now we'll drive our first stake into the ground. Not only will that make it easier to measure out the string, but it'll also put the stake exactly where we want to use it. And where we want to use it is right at our starting position, our first rock. With this first stake set in the ground, we can measure along our string with accuracy. Knowing that our radius point will be somewhere beyond these rocks, I'll stretch out the string this way. That's diagonally. And then I'll bring the measuring tape back into action. Stretch out your tape to about four and a half feet, lock it down, butt it up against the stake, and set it on the ground. Let's cut the string at 54 inches. That should give us enough slack to tie our knot. Oh yeah, that's a tool I forgot to put in the bucket. Something to cut the string with. Now, let's tie this second stake to the end of this string. Only, we won't add the extra half hitch. That way, it'll be much easier to adjust as we check out the length. All right, we're at four feet. We've got to make quite an adjustment. Loosen it up, pull it around, tighten it, check it again. We're getting close, 46. Loosen it up, tighten it up. 44 and one half inches. Now we would be wise to add that little half inch because we are going to use this a couple of times again. Now, you got to try and remember just how tightly you hold that string when you measured 44 and a half inches because that is exactly the tension you want to use when you strike your arcs. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to strike the first of two arcs that are necessary in order to locate our radius point. If you're not sure what I'm doing, allow me to explain. If you strike any two arcs the length of the radius of a circle from any point on that circle toward the circle's center, those arcs will intersect at the radius point of that circle. Since we know our first stake is the first point of our cord and therefore lies along the edge, we will use that point to strike our first arc. First, about a foot and a half this way, and then about the same that way. You give yourself a good deal more than three foot of arc so that you're sure to locate the center point somewhere along that line. One curve down, on to the second one. So we wiggle the stake out of the ground, and then we take the two stakes, the string, and the hammer over to the other rock. And since we know our third rock lies right along the edge of our cord, the same as our first, we will strike our second curve from here. Whoa, 
Am I glad we extended our first arc as far as we did? There's barely enough of it to make an intersection. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen, what we've been looking for since the beginning. Not only the length of our radius, but the location of our radius in order to place our cord, our path, exactly where we want it. So here it is, the answer to our riddle, the result of our calculations. Here is where we plant the stake from which we will strike our perfect arc. At long last, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to do what we set out to accomplish so long ago. We are about to strike that perfect arc, that circular curve. Just make sure our tension is correct and start grooving from our first rock, digging deeply as we can, going slowly, keeping the tension until we get to the apex rock. Now when you get to the apex rock, you hesitate, make sure you've got the right tension, and then keep going. Cutting that groove in the dirt all the way down to the end rock. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. A perfect arc dug in the dirt. And now we are ready, fully prepared for any curve, any cord, any turn that we wish to create as we proceed along the garden path of life.